Welcome to Affinity Designer. This video is the sequel to Affinity Designer for Beginners and takes you through some of the other features which this award-winning software has to offer. So we recommend watching the For Beginners video first before tackling this tutorial. So let's open the project file I saved at the end of the previous video by going to the file menu and selecting Open. Just to note, in this video when a command asks for it, I'll be using the menu toolbar so you know where commands are located. However, if you find you're using a particular command frequently, it might be worth learning the shortcut key listed here, as it will speed up the process for you later. So if I select open from the file menu, a dialog opens which allows me to select my AF design project file, and then click open. This video will mainly involve improving the look and feel of this oozing blood design. And I'll do this using vector tools exclusively. So the draw persona is exactly where we need to be. Now, I want to combine this shape with the teardrop shape. So first I need to select them both. I click on the top shape and then hold down the shift key and then click on the teardrop shape. You can do this either on the page, as I just did, or in the Layers panel. Now to combine these shapes together, we can use this icon here on the toolbar. However, if we hold down the ALT key when we click, the combination operation will be non-destructive. Notice how the outline of the selection has changed, so it is a single unbroken line this shows it is a single object. On the Layers panel, the two entries have been replaced with a single entry called Compound. However, if we click on the arrow here, you can see both shapes still exist and are still separately selectable. This means you can still move and modify the shapes at any point in the future. We look at compounds or Boolean shapes, as they are otherwise known, in our other tutorials. So let's move on and add some depth to this shape. Click to select the compound layer in the layers panel and then on the tool panel select the fill tool. On the context toolbar ensure that the context is set to fill and then set the type to linear. This will apply a default gradient to our object. I can change the direction of the gradient by dragging on the page. Now I want it to go from a darker red here to the red tone I currently have applied here. So I select the colour stop I want to update and choose a colour from either the swatches panel or the colour panel. I'll cover the fill tool and gradients in a little more detail later on. I'll add some more depth to this shape by adding an inner shadow, but before I do, I'm going to switch back to the Move tool using the V key. With the shape still selected, display the Effects panel by selecting its label. I'll select Inner Shadow to apply this effect to the shape and display options for modifying the effect. I'm going to adjust the radius and opacity. As I drag the sliders, the bounding box on the shape is temporarily hidden, so you can see the effect being applied in real time. The secret to getting the effects right is to simply play with them until you're happy. Bear in mind, however, that subtlety is usually the key. I'll place my settings at 40% opacity and a radius of 25 pixels. A little tip here. If you want to see what your design looks like after moving the sliders, but without deselecting the object, simply hold down the spacebar on your keyboard, like so. This design is really coming along well, but if I zoom into this area here by displaying the navigator panel and sliding the zoom slider and then clicking on the thumbnail, you can see the transition between the top shape and the teardrop shape is too harsh. In reality, these corners would be rounded. 
Well, guess what? Affinity Designer comes with a tool specifically designed to create fabulous looking corners. You'll find it here on the tools toolbar. However, the tool cannot be used directly on compounds, so we need to get a little destructive at this point. With the compound still selected on the page and in the layers panel, and with the move tool selected, select convert to curves on the context toolbar. At first, nothing seems to have changed. However, if you look at the layers panel, you'll see my selection is now listed as a curve rather than a compound, and it's lost its individual contributing shapes. Furthermore, if we reselect the corner tool, you can see that the nodes display, allowing us to play around with them. So all I need to do to round off this corner is to drag the node outwards, like so. If I zoom out a bit, I can repeat this on the other side. If I hold down the spacebar, you can see the beautifully curved corners much better. And if I zoom out to fit the entire design on screen, by going to the view menu and selecting zoom to fit, you can see it in all its glory. OK, let's add a little light reflection to the base of this teardrop to give the illusion of depth. Zoom into the area as described before and select the pen tool. The shape I'm going to create can be easily made using the pen mode if you're a master with Bezier curves, but I'm going to use the polygon mode instead. I click four times near the base of the drop to make a closed obtuse triangle. And then I'll switch to the node tool. You can do this temporarily by holding down the command key or switch fully to the node tool by pressing the A key. Next, I'll drag this line down so it matches the curve of the drop. Then I'll delete this node by selecting it and then pressing the delete key. And then I'll drag the new straight line down to curve it. I'll tweak it by moving this node and then dragging the curve handles until the shape is like a crescent moon. Next, I want to colour this white. So from the swatches panel, I select the white swatch. The effect is good, but a little too extreme. So let's adjust this by converting our solid fill to a gradient with transparency. On the tools panel, select the fill tool. Then on the context toolbar, ensure the context is set to fill. And then click the colour icon here to display a pop-up panel. Select the gradient label and you'll see a gradient set from white to white. Select the stop on the far left and click copy. This will add a new stop equidistance between the two stops and apply the same colour to it as the originally selected stop. Next, select both ends in turn and set their opacity to 0%. In other words, set them to fully transparent. Finally, on the page, drag the end stops to the tips of the moon shape. That's looking much more authentic. However, if we want to make the effect more natural, we can decrease the overall opacity of the object. With the shape still selected on the layers panel, reduce its opacity. I set it to about 50%. Now I've exposed you to one feature of the layers panel, I might as well take you in a little deeper and show you another. If you select a layer, I'll select this pixel layer, you can change how it interacts or blends with the layers below. Currently this layer is set to normal blend mode, but I can change it to something else say multiply to change how it interacts with the background rectangle. We go into more detail about these blend modes in our other videos, so if you want more information check those out or simply play around until you get something you like. Now our design is almost complete but there's room and time for me to provide you with some tips about copying in Affinity Designer. So 
My book cover is missing an author. However, I want the author's name to be exactly the same format as the book title, at least for the moment. So I'll switch to the Move tool and select the text, either on the page or on the Layers panel. And then from the Edit menu, I'll select Duplicate. This creates an identical new text object on top of the original. I can then drag it below the original. If I then triple click, the text is selected ready for me to edit. Let's say this book is by Drake Ulysses. Once I've typed the new words, I can press the escape key once and then the V key to switch to the move tool and reposition it on the page. Now to distinguish the book title from the author, I'm going to recolor the title. However, I'm going to steal the gradient and effects I've already got applied to the blood shape. I select the blood shape first, and then from the edit menu, select copy. I then select the title text, and then from the edit menu, select paste style. If I zoom in using the navigator panel, you can see that the paste style applies both the gradient fill and the inner shadow effect to the text. Now I've completed all this extra work, it's a good idea for me to save it. I do this by going to the file menu and selecting save. This will save over the original version I created in the first For Beginners video. If you need to share your design with other people and they haven't got Affinity Designer, you'll need to export it as an industry standard image file. This can be done by selecting export from the file menu. We cover exporting in several other tutorials. This video and its prequel have covered some of the fundamental tools and techniques in Affinity Designer, and I hope I've given you some idea of how you can quickly build up your designs and illustrations. But there's still so much more to learn. So please check out our comprehensive help system and our other online tutorials, all accessed from the help menu. Thanks for watching.